let me your Excellency first say that I'm very pleased with uh, the invitation uh, to say a few words at the occasion of the publication of the Dutch translation and Dutch version uh, of the uh, unfinished memoirs of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Um, I've read the book because I, uh, I saw the hard copy already uh, a bit earlier. And I'm very pleased with the fact that uh, Ron Smith, and I don't know whether he is here, also Dr. Boudelman, the uh, person who translated uh, the book, uh, have worked together in order to make this uh, uh, possible. The book was published in English 100 years after uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was born, which was uh, uh, quite necessary at that moment then to ask attention uh, for it uh, already. Why is this such an important book? After all, it's unfinished memoirs. In my view, for two reasons. Firstly, it's a detailed chronicle of the events in the early stages of a liberation struggle, like there have been many other liberation struggles. The period 55-75, uh, the period until 1955. Uh, and since then, 20 years have passed before Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was killed. So it's not about the period which was very well known at that time in the Netherlands of 1970, the floods, tremendous floods with numerous victims, the war, 71, atrocities unheard of at the time, you could compare it a bit with Biafra at the time, and independence finally in 72. It was on the tragic early phase before that period when, again, Bangladesh was in the Netherlands not a very well known country. Um, and it shows the description in the chronicle by the author how tragic politically that early phase was. And if you read it, you can come to the conclusion, it could have been different. There are three important elements. Firstly, very often forgotten, the colonial period did play a tremendous role. India, Pakistan. Pakistan West, Pakistan East. One huge country and then some technocrats who draw lines at the advice of the colonial oppressors, colonialism. And it had major consequences, of course, for the future. Secondly, it could have been different. Already in 1940, you can read it in the book, there was a kind of a political compromise within the future. Pakistan, the future Pakistan as a whole. And that political compromise included a promise of sovereignty and autonomy. As a matter of fact, it was not a fight for independence at that time. It was a political struggle with non-violent means mainly intellectuals, mainly university teachers, mainly students, and then went on. Years and years, and Jack Mujibur Rahman was one of them, together with many others. It was a struggle on, it started like it, on language. What is the dominant language? Urdu or Bengali? What's the name of the country? East Pakistan, 
or is better. Because colonialism in a different form. The second phase of colonialism, which was the logical consequence of the original phase of colonialism. And it also shows that the responsibility, why it went wrong, was a responsibility for the escalation of the struggle. The escalation of the political struggle into violence. And this responsibility was clearly the responsibility of Islamabad, and not the responsibility of the people in Dhaka. There's a second reason why this is such an important book, and it is related to the first reason. It's a personal account by one of the very important people involved. Not colored by the analysis written at the time of victory. No, it is not colored, not changed. It was a personal account of a person in jail who spoke about his ambitions, about his worries, about his disappointments, and who also showed perseverance. I will continue the struggle. He said so at a very young age, and he continued the same message also later on. So, the book is for these two reasons related to each other. In my view of historic value, also important, I would say, for students today of colonization and decolonization. Students of liberation struggles in general. I had the pleasure of being invited a couple of months ago to make a speech at one of the other occasions related to the relation between Bangladesh and the Netherlands. And at that time, I'm going to repeat myself, I had the occasion uh, to, uh, uh, to tell you something about um, my meeting with the then leader of um, the new Bangladesh. And he challenged me. He challenged me. It was quite an impressive meeting, which I have never forgotten. He did not speak with feelings of resentment. He could have. There was no language of hate. It was a language of hope, vision, and empathy with his fellow men. And he presented to me the challenge, you Dutchman, when I asked him, how can we help? The beginning of a discussion, if you are a visitor as a minister for development cooperation, well, how can we help? Build a dike. Because our future depends very strong on a new threat from outside. And it is already a major problem of today see the floods of a couple of years ago. Build a dike. Well, we worked in the field of wet water, but we couldn't build a dike. It's too much. I tried to explain it to him. He didn't understand that uh, very well. Uh, and I had to be modest, uh, of course. I said, we will do our very best to help you in the field which we, you, consider the main threat for the years uh, ahead. But the future orientation was quite important. In my own personal library, in order to prepare some remarks for today, I was trying to find my books about Bangladesh. And I have a, a file of about 30 books on Bangladesh. Some about the history. The majority about the present at the time of writing, the actual economic or the actual environmental situation. All of them, very interesting, with a future orientation. Um, all of them with reference to challenges ahead and 
possible scenarios in the future. The titles of those books were critical. Um, I, I, I quoted one of those titles a couple of months a month ago, a book by my friend uh, Raymond Sohan. His book, uh, Crisis of External Dependence. Crisis of External Dependence. But it offered a way out for Bangladesh in the future to liberate yourself, to liberate ourselves, for Japan is a Bangladesh, okay? ourselves from external dependence. And today I found another book by an author which died four days ago. Uh, Clarence Maloney. And Clarence Maloney, who wrote a lot about India, the Maldives, and also Bangladesh, um, wrote a book with another title, and that is the title Behavior and Poverty in Bangladesh. The main threat, poverty. Like the other main threat was the external uh, dependence. But that book by Clarence Maloney ends with five scenarios and eight challenges. And I'm not going to mention them, but, but the fact that you can write a book about the country and not only describing the present, it, the book was from 1988, uh, but come forward with challenges and scenarios. And if you read them now, 30 years later, then you think, yes, indeed, there were a number of people, scholars, politicians, some of them from the region, many from Bangladesh, who had the vision how to solve the problem external and internal of our uh, country. The conclusion would be, yes, indeed, we are in Bangladesh, dependent, definitely, on the outside world, climatic, economic, and political reasons, <coughs> but we are resilient. And that's the story. That is also, and I quote again what I said uh, a couple of uh, months ago, the statement by Sheikh Hasina in her brilliant lecture uh, in a book, Miles to Go, Miles to Go. She wrote, she quoted a poem, a poem by Robert Frost. Uh, the quote from the poem in her speech was, Robert Frost, I have promised to keep and miles to go before I sleep. That's indeed, that's indeed Mujibur Rahman. She inspired me, Sheikh Hasina, to find a poem from an Asian poet. I did find already your famous Shamsur Rahman. He wrote a book about the outside, uh, a poem about the outside world. The, the, the th threats for Bangladesh coming from a world which was not interested in Bangladesh. With snowing in New York, we will be on our own. That's more or less their theme of that particular poem. When it is snowing in New York, when the people meet together in their meetings in the UN, we will be on our own. We have to do it ourselves. Um, um, it meant, in fact, that you have to know the road. You have to know the direction, where to go. You need some leadership in order to follow that road. That is 
was Mujibir Rahman, I think, was living for and showing to his people. And maybe he did it in the spirit of Tagore. And I finish with a poem from Tagore, Motion. I know that life is full of joys and sorrows, smiles and tears, that cruel bones for knots and knots of scars. I know that in the charming of the ocean of earthly life, it's someone's luck to get nectar, someone's luck to get deadly poison. I don't know why all this happens, or how this system will work out in the end. I don't know what will happen in the future. All is darkness in this world from beginning to end. I don't know whether or not there is an end to all griefs. Whether the craving for happiness can satisfy eternal hopes. I don't want to know about the mystery of life at the doors of the pundits. I don't want to tear by myself the world's white bonds. I have only one way to go. It's with the countless creatures of this world. I'm certain that he read the poem when he was in prison. Thank you.